All right, I drew up a diagram of what I'm going to, how I'm going to wire the car for the hydrogen cell. It uh, starts off with a 12 volt battery, and we go to a fuse, a 30 amp fuse, and then we go to our relay, and that is operated by a switch that is grounded, and then it goes to a shunt to meter the amperage, and that's going to be run off of a 9 volt battery, probably add a switch in there. And we have our HHO generator, and we go back to the battery. Now, to power the voltmeter, I'm going to volt switch, come from the 12 volt battery, and the switch, and then ground out. So that's pretty much what we're going to work with here. I'm going to show you further along how I'm going to specifically install the cell into my car. Alright, well, since the battery is in the back, I want to point out one more thing. The Optima battery is a great choice for this because it can crank out a lot more power. I wouldn't recommend using a stock battery if you're going to have a hydrogen cell. It would even be preferable to have a uh, performance alternator. But since my battery is in the back and there's no room for me to install the cell in the front of the car, I'm going to put the cell here. But see, that poses a problem because I'm going to have to run the hydrogen line underneath my car to the front of the intake. So this is what I'm going to have to do. I've already disassembled the car at this point as far as taking up the seat and the flooring. So the hydrogen line is going to have to come from under the seat, under the carpet, around, and I'm going to have to drill a hole right around here to the firewall to get it in the front because there's not a big enough hole in my car to put the hydrogen tube. So, this is basically what we're looking at. I'm going to be coming through under here, have the hydrogen line run around the side and have a bubbler. And then from the bubbler, I'm going to drive around put the tube right into the intake. I got my hole drilled so I can now start wiring everything up. My plan here is, I got everything aside and took the seat off and the side paneling, so now I have, this is my positive wire that is on my car runs stock. I'm going to start tracing all the wires through, and I'm going to, I changed my design a little bit, I'm going to use all three. I'm going to have a switch for each, one for the, to turn the cell on, one for the voltmeter, and one for the amp meter, and they go right in the middle. So I'm going to start tracing the wires to there, and then from there, we're going to go up to the cluster pod. Well, I got all my wires from my interior set up and, and organized, and I labeled each one to the corresponding part, just in case I ever have to disconnect my car again. I would definitely recommend doing that. I'm starting to put the wires through. I've done a pretty good deal of that. I'm tracing it from the battery, and I got some oh, my relay and the cell and everything is going to go over here. But I got it through this piece right here and comes around. I got zip ties everywhere. I'm zipping it to the main power line. And I'm insulating it and wrapping it in each place. I got my fuel line right here. You can see. And I'm coating it in this plastic stuff right here. It's really cheap. It's like two bucks. It goes around it really easily and then you just tape around it. Add an extra protection. Again, this fuel line's up to 200 psi, which should be more than enough. And the places where it won't fit, like under here, I'm just I just wrap it with a lot of electrical tape to give it more, you know, abrasion resistance. And I got over here it going right into to the firewall. And when we come around. I'm going to have it come in through here, and I'm going to have to wrap it with a lot of foil tape and insulate it because I got my headers right here. That's a very hot area, so we're going to put the bubbler over here and then trace it around into the intake. All right, guys, I got the wires actually in place. I might have to start reassembling the car in a little bit. I have to say, this is definitely not for the faint of heart. This takes hours and hours of work. So if you don't have the time or patience, don't even try. 
I mean, we got everything here. These are my grounds. These are all the, the wires for the switches, as you can see. And then we got the other side. These are the wires for the voltmeter and the ammeter and the measured current with the shunt. So, that's about it, ladies and gents. All right, well, we got the next step done. We put back in accessories and pieces of plastic that you have to step on to cover the wires. But I had to, you know, break off certain pieces to allow the wires to fit because there's a lot more wire now than there was before. So that's what we're looking at. Now it's about 2.15 in the morning, and I got the floor in. I still got to put all the pieces around there. I got the back seat. The car's looking pretty normal. And uh, I got this level right here. I had to make up because it was a little bit bigger right here so I put these extra pieces here to level it out so when you step there's no change uh, now I'm gonna put the cell in the back I'm about to do a test run to see if everything works I don't have the uh, the LCD connected but beyond that the, the voltmeter and the hydrogen cell are connected and if you notice right now it is off but I have my shunt and my relay and everything's connected up got my fuse so let's give it a test run alright let's do it let's see what we got here voltmeter on and LED on let's see we have voltage look at this Let's turn the switch off again. Badass voltmeter. All right, let's do. Let's see if the hydrogen cell's running. <laughs> oh hell yeah! I think we're doing pretty good. Well, I got to just connect the rest up of the car, and that'll be it. And I got. A little further done, I got the shunt and the relay installed, and I reinforced the side here, made it put a little bit of padding so it's not sitting up against the side. Um, I traced my lines and put many layers of insulation on them all around just to make sure that I don't have any problems with it. And right down here, this naturally the car naturally ventilates, so I put the hydrogen cell right here. It's going to be completely hidden, and if anything actually happens or it leaks, it'll go right to the car, so it's safe. Okay, we have everything hooked up now, and uh, except for the line going to the front, but if you notice, I have everything insulated. This is the battery for my amp meter. I have my lines running through there. All I have to do now is run a line up around here, but this is my cell, and this is a little ghetto... A <laughs> bubbler I made. It's pretty stupid, but it's very functional. And uh, what you'll notice is it's completely concealed. Once I push it back, you can't even notice the cells there, which is awesome. So it doesn't actually take up any of my trunk room. Then I'm going to show you guys how it works, and you'll see what you think. All right, this is what we're dealing with. I'm going to make this cluster look a little bit better, but uh. Basically, power on for the cell, power on for the voltmeter, power on for the ammeter. So, a little over 12 volts, pull 9.4 amps, and it'll crank up higher when I start the car. Now, this is very dependent on how much height sodium hydroxide you put in there. Initially, I was running about 20 amps last night when I checked it out, and uh, so I had to turn it down a little bit, otherwise you'll have a lot of amperage consumption. But come around here, and you notice the cell's working, and it's very secure. It's not going anywhere. I mean, I can't even move it. Zip ties are the trick. They always are. All right. Well, I'll get back to you when I get further on the progression of the intake. 